moving on to, say, an SLS duct. There's a lot of SLS ducting that gets printed. That's one of the major applications of SLS printing is printing ducts for aerospace, Formula One, um, lot, lots of different like industries. And so we can walk, I'm gonna walk you through basically how to design very quickly a duct with incredibly thin walls that is still rigid enough not to deform when you put actual pressure on the inside rather than just designing a part that's way too strong. Like a, a lot of traditionally manufactured parts work really well, but they're way over-engineered, or they have way too much material. And if you're in an, in an industry where weight matters, for instance, and you're trying to get down to the smallest possible amount of weight while still preserving that strength, it's time to start thinking about sort of different and kind of novel ways of modeling geometries to solve these problems, rather than just tweaking your machine until the nth degree, and then maybe you get a part out that works at the end, because you've fine-tuned your machine for like six months, and then you've got all the settings right, maybe a quick geometry change at the very beginning could save you six months of fine-tuning that machine. And it was actually just a, like an issue in your CAD file rather than in the machine. And so in this case, I'm literally just going to design you a duct from scratch in like 10 minutes, something around that period of time. We'll see how long it takes. And so let's say we've got This, sorry, my mouse is not a lot of room up here for a mouse. So I'm basically just drawing some curves here, and I'm going to pipe them at four millimeters. Nope, bigger than that. Pipe at 25. So we've got some ducting here. Copy. It's always good to place original files and original surface files on different la layers for later, just in case you might need them. And so let's stick them together. Maybe this one is slightly smaller. And so here we have what would be a, a, like a, actually let's make it a lot smaller. This in a traditional manufacturing would be at least three different parts currently already where someone would have to go in and weld this particular area back together either with a sonic welder or glue or it basically adds another area of failure, another failure point into this part, which I'm not a particular fan of. And so if I stick everything together, So now we've got a very simple, very simple duct in here for something to move through air, fluid, water, oil, anything you can imagine. And so, but maybe when we're printing it, like we through some testing determined that a wall thickness in SLS of 0.5 millimeters is what we're going for. And so this is a very thin wall duct, half a millimeter. This is almost like a piece of paper. Not almost like a piece of paper, still thicker than a piece of paper, but very thin. And in this case, it wouldn't be very strong. Like there's not a lot of reinforcement. It would still look like this, but maybe when you fill it full of some pressurized fluid or air, it would distort. You may end up with an oval shape, which is very detrimental to your overall product. And so the question is like, what, what do you do now? Like, do you sit and play with the SLS machine and increase the laser power, the decrease the fill spacing, or like really try and like refine those machine settings? Or do you just modify the geometry just slightly to make it a little bit better? And so very quickly, and so in my case, I personally like to modify the geometry before I go and try and solve the problem with machine settings, because sometimes it could just save you a lot of time. So I opened what is a, uh, a parametric modeling software called Grasshopper, which plugs directly into Rhino, which is super nice, but I'm not here to teach you softwares today. But uh, I can very quickly associate different, um, I shouldn't have hidden, hidden that. Okay. I can very quickly associate different, I've got to explode this again, sorry. No. The different 
I'm trying to think of what I was trying to say. Different structures onto this, uh, onto this surface. And so, I mean, got a hexagonal grid going along here right now, which I could use to reinforce this structure with, I mean, in. Why isn't it clicking? 0.5 millimeters. So now we've got basically a hexagonal structure with half millimeter diameter reinforcement reinforcement going along the outside of this object. And so, but really that, due, due to some testing, maybe I printed out once. Let me even hide these guys and hide that. Maybe we've printed it out once, and I'm just going to literally do that again to the other object as well. And they don't match, and I could spend a fair amount of time sitting here trying to get these, these patterns to match up. But just for the sake of speed right now, 50. So I, can, I could print this out and be like, maybe, maybe it's not, not strong enough yet. I can very quickly do a new iteration. Ooh, that was too many. And then, of course, it gets heavier. But so now we've got a duct with a reinforced hexagonal structure along the outside. And I am working one of the interesting, not interesting, one of the things I like to do, and we do a lot, is basically work halfway between meshes and NURBs, because there are some things that are very difficult to do with a NURB surface and with traditional NURB modeling that are very easy to do in mesh. And then vice versa. There's things that you just can't do with a mesh modeler, or it's very difficult to do with a mesh modeler that you can do very easily with NURB surfaces. And so I like to work basically halfway between the two, the two sort of traditional file formats and bounce around between a couple of different programs, possibly because like maybe it would take me all day to sit and draw every single one of these lines on a surface and have it be conformal. But as you saw, I did it in like a few minutes just now with, with, a, uh, with a mesh modeler. And so let me go down here, add the same number of cells to that little guy. And so now we've got a pretty reinforced duct here. It didn't even, so I'm also lazy in that I'm not going to do this to the bottom half because it's a symmetrical part, so I can literally just bake it or just mirror it over. And so if I take, oops, those didn't bake. So now we've got reinforced structures on those two different pipes. And I'm lazy, so I'm going to literally, instead of doing that twice and using twice as much processing power to create those shapes, let's just mirror them about, about the middle. And so now we've got a nice part that's reinforced all the way around the whole object. And then if I go in here and click on these internal surfaces, since they're still two-dimensional surfaces, join them together, offset them in, and we determined earlier that a one millimeter or a half millimeter thickness was what we wanted. And so now we've got, well, what's going on there? Oh, that's an old, an old chunk. But we've basically very quickly got this nice uh, reinforced duct. But the CAD looks all gross and nasty, and we can see there's reverse normals here, and these actually are still two separate objects which in some printers doesn't matter. In SLS, for instance, you can actually probably just stop right now. And in the, the, the slicing software would merge them together, or the verifying portion of the slicing software would merge them together. And you can kind of leverage that in your design process. Personally, I would like to take this one step further and export this entire object to, as an OBJ, but to another sort of mesh modeling program called ZBrush which is traditionally used in the movie industry to make basically everything you see in movies. And so let's call this SLS duct 2Z brush. And so if I open ZBrush, which is an incredibly powerful program that a lot of or most engineers that I know have basically never even seen before, but it does stuff that you could only dream about like if you wanted to apply, a, say, a, uh, like a golf ball texture to the inside of a really complicated object, and you'd have to sit there in like a in Pro E or in SolidWorks and think of how to like boolean out a very particular pattern all along the inside of this object, which could take you 
all day or all week, but in a different kind of software, it is seconds because that's it's just what they do. And so if I if I just drag this part in here, now there's it gave me a weird little result here, which is a graphical issue going on, but that should fix itself very quickly. Actually, let me export those as two separate parts. The internal structure. E. Not explode. Export exp. Internal structure. Let me hide that. And then I'm going to export the external structure separately. So I'm going to call it hex. 